Hello everybody. First of all, the, what Rajiv said, although I am presenting it, but this is project is developed by all of us, the team member for our bidding, including Ng, which we could fortunately get his inputs yesterday for last two days. As there have been debate that like even DDGR mentioned that forward bidding is not doing the breeding. Yeah, that's true. Even we are not mapping the marker or identify the markers. The role of forward bidding starts when genomics brings the markers and then forward bidding will, is supposed to work with the crop improvement team and deliver the improved lines. And I again want to clarify forward bidding is not going to take any crossing. We will just support how to use markers, tools, technologies so that breeders can select and develop line in a faster manner than the routine manner. What is the forward bidding strategies and how we plan? So there are the few baselines which we have defined. If you say identify the research needs, it's in collaboration with the genomics scientists along with the breeders. What are their needs? What are the traits they want to focus on this initial product delivery? Then with work with uh, Vincent and team, the high throughput precision phenotyping tools because if you see any even the mark, use of market depend on the how good is your phenotyping. Be better the phenotyping your marker will work in the best and that's the way to identify the diagnostic markers. Use of marker to increase efficiency. This is how we can increase the rate of genetic gains as per the equation. And one of the factors which even DG and DDG are mentioning that define the baselines. Unless we have baselines we can never measure whether we contributed something. So it will give us so that after a couple of years we can identify okay we have contributed this much. So we need to define the baselines along with the all stakeholders. Then strategy planning of experiments because experiment planning is one of the major point that define the success of project. If your planning is good you definitely will get a good product which will be of great importance. If we commit some mistake at very first step, everything is going to ruin. So through fast forward bidding, what we are trying to do is the marker validation, then convert the available marker which already the GTD team has identified for the high throughput genotyping platform. That's one of the major project here, where which I will explain next slides, then develop the biomarkers or the genomic estate bidding. And what we are expecting is that improved line at the end of the things modernize the bidding program and for finally enhance the rate of genetic gain for increased mended crops at least. Coming to the forward bidding what we have vision this if you see the pedigree based management if you see this equation normal people say that you are going in the same seven seasons you are following the same strategy but but my saying and what our forward bidding theme thinks when you do the normal bidding selection, you do generate F2, you do selection, then you reach F7 and then you move to multi-location testing and evaluate the lines. But if you start using the early generation marker selection, then you screen the line in F2 level for the markers, diagnosis marker for which we have suppose some disease resistant. Although we follow the same, but when we talk about the pedigree method, Suppose we get 10 lines at the end and then we start screening these lines again a particular disease for instance if I say about chickpea, fusel and wilt and out of 10 lines about 5 are susceptible. So those 5 lines goes waste and the efforts which breeders put a lot is reduced. But if we start screening in F2 with fusel markers and we are very much sure that if we get the 10 lines in F7 generation they all 10 should be resistant to fusel and wilt and their success rate increases. All this taking that time, but investment, if you say investment on this ratio, this is very good is that all of the lines are resistant and you can directly use them as a product. So here comes how power bidding can provide solutions. So there are different small themes which I'll say that revolve around the genetic gain, heterosis bidding, then pedigree market selection, market street backcrossing, single large scale mass, marker evaluatory selection, breeding by design, marker silicon selection and genomic selection. It's not that we are starting anything new, many things are already going on, even breeders and we as earlier I was genomic scientists, so we were working on the genomic selection if I say for legumes, chickpea and groundnut, we are very much in good stage and we feel confident we should be able to deliver. 
and similarly mabc groundnut and chickpea i can say the legume thing there we are doing in a very advanced stage and we have a mabc product also now so this proves that yes these bug solutions can definitely contribute and we can increase the productivity and develop, deliver the superior lines when we start this forward bidding program first one of the major factor which comes as the availability of candidate markers because for stpg we need to have markers that can run on the snip line or casper system most of the markers which are available right now are the ssr dart but whenever we talk with any donor they say these are outdated thing and why you are continuing with that thing so first step which we are taking about that we need to convert the available markers which are identified the genomics team to convert these markers for the stpg so that we can immediately deploy them for the selection so for this we will collaborate with the we have already collaborated with the crop improvement and the gtd teams markers identified by gtd then plan is to do sequence of available markers for identity of candidate snips then we need to validate the marker mapping population whether the snips we identify are really working or not then validation of markers for the snip line and then markers are available for the forward bidding another one of the major factor or major project in the forward bidding is high throughput genotyping facility this dg and ddg have emphasized several time in their presentation the plan is to bring down the cost of genotyping earlier plan was to bring it to one dollar but because of several things now it's about two dollar per sample including dna isolation and i think highlight that answers your question also you said that subsidize genotyping cost so this project will definitely serve your purpose so there was so far so many negotiations with lgc intertech and finally the negotiations are finalized almost with the intertech as rajiv mentioned tomorrow intertech is inaugurating its facility in hyderabad and one facility is already working in sweden or oh, day after tomorrow sorry and under the agreement ecrisat cimet irri and other cg centers they can avail the facility even from ecrisat or i just have a couple of facts not much or even sweden suppose hale wants to avail the facility from sweden he doesn't want to send sample to hyderabad he can easily send sample in sweden and then as part of project and for being team will provide some initial incentives rajiv is handling this being a pi right now and maybe feature yeah feature is i'm saying right now uh, ingil be right now we have planned to buy some handheld device i'll explain in next slide how this will be used for sample collection so that is one of the factor to bring down the cost of dna isolation very down about 50 cents or so and then about 10000 samples will be pre genotyped for the bidding team i think in will have a meeting with all the then how to distribute those tent on samples and then there will be a subsidy on different samples ikra has been given a target of 240000 samples for year 1 and we need to work here as that why i have mentioned handheld device good thing is this that this handheld device is gps enabled and as abhishek is already tagging all the plants with the barcode so this will help once you scan the plant at your computer the location and detail of our plant will go you will from the handle there you just collect the leaf patches put in the cassette that cassettes will be shipped to intertech location they will do the dna isolation and then genotype with the thing so we will not have any load of the dna isolation quality that will be the headache of the intertech <laughs> no that's what i'm saying <laughs> another major factor in that power bidding is the modern genomics appro bidding approaches including mabc which i explained market sequence selection and genomic selection as i already mentioned these things are already in the way so this is not we are proposing new but we want to strengthen this especially in the location in africa where we see a lot of scope for improvement and we need to deploy those things another point which as a gobi where ecrisat is also partner along with the cimet and irri it we plan to develop the tools that will help breeders for the selecting the lines for pedigree verification and the mass and genomic selection tools so this also i want to toilet is we are focusing on this and just to introduce the team so that many people will not ink is a 
leader is joining the team soon already is here hema is taking care of the cereal forbidding activities and i am taking care of the legume forbidding with the strong support from vikas sarita sandeep and ankit maybe more will have soon thank you so much damn it <laughs> this was not my fault <laughs> no, it was my fault okay uh manish uh, and in uh, and others here uh, this as i've said in my opening talk this area of board breeding has created lots of discussion about um you know, where does it sit in the institute and how does it relate to the breeders so the, initially when it was put forward the breeders were saying well hey what's board breeding doing in genetic gain the breeding's done in the regions so there's lots of discussion to have with the breeders about what's the role in in board breeding versus the breeding in the regions and then subsequent to that there's I know there's been lots of discussion across the themes of genetic gain you know what level of validation is done in the other themes versus in this board breeding thing so i expect in the next two days that this is a primary point of discussion articulating and agreeing about what the forward breeding theme does uh not one view but a, a consensus view if we can get to in the next two days so sure. i know that in your verbally you you articulate to say this theme is about supporting how to use markers and tools for the breeding program your slides say that you're going to provide the tools and markers and etc so there's some agreement has to be had around what that means support versus providing relative to the other thing so a key job in the next day and a half is to get this clear and not contentious okay that's a comment and an expectation thank you peter okay and sorry about that well thanks for thanks for the comment i i guess i just want to resonate to to uh, what the dg has said um for for me i'm still trying to grasp where um if you're satisfied that in terms of uh, this uh for breeding effort and so far i think um there are a lot of uh, potentials uh, that I, you know that i would like to work with all these uh, all you guys and, uh, thanks manish for, uh, for for giving the nice presentation so yeah just just my comment or, or i guess my my thoughts on for breeding i guess a lot of you guys have actually asked me the questions for the past two days um really we're not really trying to reinvent the way um we do breeding i mean that that the crisat as an organization as a whole i mean the breeding component the delivering the product to the farmers the highest quality product that remains the same doesn't matter you do pedigree breeding or breeding molecular marker assisted selection breeding whatever it's all the same it is really a breeding scheme the way we approach uh the breeding methods and um i, I guess answering to, to some of the breeders um you probably wonder how um for breeding is going to help you um i guess um you, you shared a sli slide earlier on the um, i guess using markers to to help shrink down or make your um selection more effective i i guess this is how for breeding will come in play is really the integration of all these uh, expertise from different groups like for example uh rajiv's group will be able to provide that deliver will be the, the the good markers or a good genomic prediction those things and how we're going to integrate it to 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 the breeding program in order to save resources for example for for the breeding program so that you you really can um, focus on your resources on selecting the what really matters in the end so, so it it really broad it, it's not a one size fits all approach and you know every crops at different levels so we really have to work together as a team and yeah so for for the discussion very good thanks patrick we will have some more discussion on this topic because this is important so we don't want to have some more questions on this yeah. please go ahead patrick yeah mine is just a short one after listening to 1 to 4 there are two questions i ask myself if i'm an outsider the question is what are we responding to what is the problem in other words the question that rajiv raised on prioritization i think somebody must drive the traits that we are looking for as an example 
the big focus right now is on expanding markets and urbanizations. So clearly, output traits is the big issue. You will not get output traits from wild plants because wild plants will give you input traits, which is an issue that could as well be perhaps taken care of. Maybe we need to be dealing with agronomy issues, things of how we manage the crop space, things like that which could be handled from the innovation systems perspective. So I'm just saying that we need to reflect a little bit more critical and think how the two interplay. Who is driving the demand for the traits we are dealing with and the investments that we are making? I just thought we should reflect about this. Thank you. Any other question, comment? Okay, but I would like to add one more thing and as Peter said and I think and this was one of the reasons that we would like to see the consensus so this group next two days that which activity and I mean at least some idea about the responsibility of these different things. This is one of the reasons that even in the brainstorming we did not keep genomics or forward breeding separate, we kept together and then we, when you have the interaction with the breeders so basically we are bringing all these three important stakeholders together, have good discussion, come up with the consensus approach if we can, as much as we can so this will be one of the important things. And DG mentioned and Patrick you raised the question but again these are the issues for the brainstorming. In my opinion this prioritization should be driven by the breeding programs in the different regions that what traits they need. If again coming back that the genomics program that well how to identify the markers till what level of markers we need to have so this could be there. So and then so I mean sometimes that's the reason that uh, at some time point even in the genetic gains program in the with the team leaders meeting and also with DG and DDG separately many times I was saying these areas they are so closely related with each other it's really difficult to create a boundary that well this is the job of genomics full stop this is the job of forward breeding full stop or this is the job of the breeder. So in my opinion what I was promoting and I think this will be really good idea these things should be led by the team. In those teams we should have the scientists representing different teams. So if we will say well only the breeders will do everything or forward breeding will do, no. We need to have the team and depending on the activity sometimes scientists from one particular team may have the major role, the other thing may have lesser role. That's the way that things need to move. So in, in fact in my opinion we need to map out these kind of things. There's another region, Peter, that 12 in genetic gains program and we have discussed that it will be good idea if scientists working on one particular theme, they would like to map their time to the other theme as well. So basically, we are working at the theme level, not exclusively the theme level. So we know that there are some issues, there thing, but then again for everything, especially when you have the new structure or for anything, if something comes first time new in the market, I know from my time that when computer came in India many people were reluctant that well this will have this problem this but then once you take up the challenge or you start to have commitment that we need to do this thing things happen so maybe that this is some first few months we will keep on doing this thing but at later stage those rough edges will be smooth and things will continue to move. So that's the reason that this next two days the brainstorming will be much more or they are very critical and they are very useful this is one of the reasons that the breeders from the different regions, they have come here to participate in these. Okay, so thanks a lot Manish, Ing and Thank other you everybody for that.